For this video, we'll move away from the app and jump back over to the landing page to create some parallax motion. So far, we've really only used this page to set up our initial prototype, but landing pages and marketing sites can be a great place to use parallax animation. A lot of times in apps, it can be a little distracting from the task someone's trying to accomplish, but for landing pages, it can add both dimension and personality. Parallax animation is a really effective way to create depth and dimension without adding lots of shadows or other lighting effects. As digital design has become flatter, motion allows us to have some of those spatial cues that would be lost otherwise. In parallax motion, you're basically mimicking the feeling of a 3D space with two-dimensional objects. By having objects that are closer to the viewer move more quickly than objects that are further away, the experience is comparable to how we see objects moving outside of the screen. Similar techniques have been used long before they came to web design. Traditional animators have used complex camera setups to create similar effects since the 1930s, most famously with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And parallax motion has also been used in video games since the 1980s. Let's look at a quick example of a live site that uses parallax, and then we'll create one of our own. So here we have the site for Epicurrence. Epicurrence is an event hosted by Dan Petty and his team, it's basically just a way to kind of get outside, meet other creative people, and then there's a handful of discussions and talks and things like that. So as we start scrolling, we can see objects are moving at different speeds. We've got the background moving the slowest, and then the logo, and then the words, and then finally the illustration of these folks sitting around the campfire. We get sort of a 3D sense from all of these 2D elements. Even though we never actually see the logo or the text dip behind these people, it's obvious that the people are in front of the content because of the motion. And then as we continue to scroll, you can see this badge or stamp moves a little faster to show that it's in front of this illustration. As we scroll up and down, we can see the text around this image rotates back and forth depending on our scrolling. This is also a great example of parallax, but it doesn't really create the sense of depth that we're going for for this particular project. These words that are sort of in the background, they actually do move faster than the rest of the content. And so that's an example of using parallax motion a bit more stylistically rather than purely to create depth. And then similarly, as we continue to scroll, we see that the images not only move at a different speed, but they're cropped. And then finally, there are some subtle zoom effects. So overall, this is a great example. The motion is pretty subtle, but it really does create a sense of depth. And when it breaks from purely creating a sense of depth, it has some really great stylistic approaches as well as we saw with the moving text. Let's move back over to Studio and then we can start doing something similar with our page. So here's our landing page. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a description, a couple calls to action, and a couple images. And the way it's laid out, we can see it looks like this image is on top of this image. And then it already almost looks like the get started button is further back since it doesn't have a shadow on it. To create a parallax animation for this page, we'll have to set up a starting artboard and an ending artboard. Before I do that though, I'll just draw a rectangle across the screen, and I'll position it at a Y value of 720 pixels. I know this is roughly the size of our artboard, so rather than having to resize our artboard, this gives us access to the content on both of the screens without having to go in and try to move layers that aren't visible. So now that we have that rectangle, we'll copy it over and then we'll create an interaction on the artboard. Studio doesn't really have the concept of scroll triggers, so we'll have to use either drag or tap to do this. I'll select drag up, decrease the delay, and then save. And then going over to the second artboard, I'll select everything except the background and the rectangle, and I'll move it up. And then when we preview this, we swipe up and we see that it moves, but it doesn't really look like parallax. Everything is moving at the same speed. And so we know we want this top image to move a bit faster, so we'll move that up further. And then we'll move up the second one just a bit, but not as far as the first one. If we select the headline from the layers panel, we'll drag it back down until it's just outside of the screen. And then we can preview this. And now we've got some motion, but we can make it even more realistic. We want a bit of motion on the background. It's completely static right now. 
So I'll move it up just until this Get Started button is visible. That not only will create a better sense of depth, but it'll also highlight that button as we scroll. And then one more thing that I noticed, Headline is on top of both of our images right now, and so we'll just have to reorder that. When you're creating parallax animations, it's good to have your layers in the order of perceived distance from the screen. So the image will be our top layer. And then we'll go back and preview it again. I'll swipe up. And it's looking pretty good. We'll create an interaction that goes in the opposite way. So I'll just change this one from drag up to drag down. And then hit save. Now when we preview, we can go back and forth between the two different states. For this example, these transitions are working pretty well, but there's one small trick if you find that you're having to scroll too much before it activates. So I'll jump back over to the landing page, and then this time, rather than selecting the artboard, I'll just select the headline group. And then if I create a drag interaction on that element, then you don't have to drag as far to activate the interaction. You can also just draw a rectangle on the screen where someone would be likely to scroll and then put it to opacity zero and put your trigger on that. And so now that we've set up a landing page that has some pretty realistic motion, I just wanted to show you an example of something that uses a similar concept but has a slightly different approach. For this version of the landing page, I wanted to create a rotation effect rather than a depth effect. If we go to preview it, you can see that the background is moving the fastest rather than the slowest. And then the elements that are in the front, they're actually moving in the opposite direction. So it almost looks like we're rotating around that primary image. This isn't a concept I've really seen in web or app design, and it makes sense because there's not a lot of use cases where you would want something rotating, but I do think it's an interesting example. It's definitely something that's been used in traditional animation that hasn't really crossed over to web design. For now though, let's move back over to using motion to create something that's a bit more realistic or believable.